have some people in the house fired up. Come on now. We have some people fired up in the house today. <laughs> We're excited today. Let me start with this and then you guys can sit down. We're, we're starting a series called Hope Grows Here. And in case you forgot, Jesus is still hope for the hopeless and the church is still the hope of the world. Yeah. Now you can sit down after you give somebody a high five and say there's hope. There's hope in the house. Welcome today. Glad that you're with us. Excited as we kick off this series, Linda, called Hope Grows Here. We're going to be talking about a campaign that we're in called Hope Grows Here, but the series is all about hope. And for those of you that know me, I like to do things like they make things rhyme. It's easier if you like to remember things. So I have these like little catchphrases and we'll say things like an invitation leads to a conversation that can cause transformation and allow eternal destination. I just like how that sounds. So I was thinking about Hope Grows Here and I thought, what about an acronym? HGH, and then I thought, oh, wait a minute, hang on, <laughs> HGH is human growth hormone, it's illegal unless prescribed by a doctor, and I thought, well, wait a second then, let, let, let me think about this, isn't Jesus still the great physician, and what if Jesus prescribed hope because I still believe that Jesus wants his church, come on, to get bigger and stronger. So let's go with HGH. Hope grows here. HGH, the church is the hope of the world. Jesus wants his church, Linda, to be bigger and stronger. He wants you to be bigger and stronger in your faith. We, you, us, as the church, are the hope of the world. Man, God's done some great so, things. So, so good. So what we want to do tonight, or today, is just give you a little bit of a backstory to then start talking about what we're calling Hope Grows Here. So if you know anything about TE Church, and if you don't, we're going to tell you where we came from. We started at Sherrard Middle School with about 40 people in attendance. We moved from there to, it was the old Value City building. I don't know if you guys remember that, in Benwood. And we were there for about five months. We grew to about 175, yes, something like that. I think we were about 175 About 175 people. people. It was awesome. After about five months, we moved then to the Strand Theater, which is in Moundsville. And what you have to know is when we first started, we started with an evening service because we weren't going to call it church. We were going to call it happy hour. Like it was happy hour. Any so happy hour people here, you're like, <laughs> yeah, awesome. So we got to Moundsville, and, and we were growing so quickly in Moundsville that we had to add a second service, and so we added a morning service. And we grew to about, what, 275? 250, 275 270, at yeah, the 250, Strand 275. in Moundsville. And then this building in Bridgeport, Ohio came open. And God opened this door so wide that all we could do was just say, you know what, we're going to walk right through it. And that's the building we're in right now. And actually, the weekend of Memorial Day will be our three-year anniversary of being in this Amazing. building. Three years yeah. later. It's been a good, yeah. been a good run. Yeah. And watch what God has done since we've been faithful, just saying, God, if we need to move, we're not going to just stay where we are. We're going to go to where you want us to be. This past Easter, we had over 1,850 people come through the doors of our church. Out of those 1,850 people, we saw 221 people make a decision for Jesus. I mean... Well, it's here, incredible. Here's the thing about TE. We are two things. We are attractional and we're intentional. Yes. So we're attractional for that first-time person who wants to come in and see what's going on here at the church. But we're very intentional when that person gets here, which are all of us in this building, that we provide something that will help you to stay, and that is Jesus. So we provide Jesus. Good. And listen, where we've been and is different than where we're going. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk a little bit more about Hope Grows Here. Hope Grows Here. And let me just say this. If you're a first-time guest today, really, why we do church the way we do church is for you. It's so that it doesn't matter if you've got a church background. You can walk into this place and you can get it. It's going to make sense to you. Jesus wasn't just for a few. He was for everyone. So, Hope Grows Here. What is Hope Grows Here? Well, for us right now, it's a campaign. It's a project that we're in the middle of. And what it is, as we are purchasing 14 acres of land that will be the future home of the Experience Church. 14 acres of land. It's about four minutes west of here. I believe it's hand-selected by our great God. It's the best location 
in Belmont County. It's right along the highway, thousands and thousands of people. I think they're showing the video right there. It feels like I'm on a roller coaster when I watch that video, though, doesn't it? Like, it's a little, if anyone gets sick, just do it to the person on your left. Everybody on the person on your right, say, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> But we believe it's going to be incredible. And we are purchasing this land. And anyone that knows anything about land, you're going to get this. The cost of this land is only $160,000 for 14 acres. I'm telling you, that's amazing. I almost feel like we should repent for taking it for that price. I'm like, it's just it's incredible. Now, here's the great news. So far in the last couple months since we've started this campaign, we've got a new figure. I feel like it's the Jerry Lewis telethon, and I'm giving you guys a number. <laughs> Here it is. Total to date that we've raised is $114,658. It's amazing. Because of your generosity, because of your willingness to say it's not about me, it's always about someone else meeting Jesus. Now, here's how much we still have to go. And I'm not a math guy, but I'll, I'll, maybe it'll be on the screen. Here's what we still need to raise. Can we put it up? $45,342. Now, we need to do this by June 14th or we're taking out a loan. I don't believe God's people should have to take out a loan for $45,000. I believe that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. It all belongs to him, and all we have to do is bring back a portion that he's given us so that we can do this thing. Now, some people get a little overwhelmed. and Oh, listen, this is just phase one. Phase two is when we get serious. Phase two is building the building. Phase two is when we, I got to stand for this because sometimes a preacher just got to preach. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it's too important. It's too important what we're doing. We are building an auditorium that the Valley has never seen for a church. We are building an auditorium that will hold at least 1,000 people because people matter. We count people because people count. We are going to have a TE Kids Center, a TE Kids Wing, unparalleled to anything else. And you might be like, well, wait a minute. Wait, why, does, why do we have to do all this? We're just, come on, isn't that a little extravagant? Aren't you thinking a little big? And here's my point. I am tired of Disney World outdreaming the church. I am tired of people being more fired up about Disney World than about God's church. I tell people all the time, I said, let me, let me just be honest with you. I'd rather spend eternity with a king than a week with a mouse. Come on, somebody. We're talking about eternity for people. I mean, really, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. We're going to do it on a whole another level for our middle school and high school students, our 412 wing. We have a whole auditorium designed just for them. Why? Because middle school and high school matters to us. Because I want to tell you, if you spend more time investing in young people now, you'll spend less time fixing them later. So we're going to do this thing. And I want to tell you, the down payment alone is probably going to be in the neighborhood of $800,000. And before anyone gasps and goes, oh my God, how are you going to get $800,000? Oh what are we going to do? I don't, you don't have that kind of money. Are you kidding me? Come on. We're not just anybody. We're God's people. God could do anything at any time with anyone. We just have to get serious about it. We, we got to say, we're going to do whatever we have to do to build something that will be here long after you're gone. Guess what? This isn't for me. Come on, I'm 54. I can only be so sexy in skinny jeans for a while. I, I've got a timeline. But you know what I'm thinking of? My kids and their kids and their kids and their kids. I mean, let's think gener generationally for our church. We're thinking long term. Come on, it's not about us. But it's going to require us, it's going to require you to say, I'm all in. I'm in it, Linda, to win it. That's the what. Let's talk about why are we doing it. Why are we doing this? And some of you might be asking that, that right now. Like, why are we doing this? We have this building. Why are we moving to a different location? Listen, we've already outgrown this place. We've already outgrown the space that we're in. 
and there's not much more that we can do here, and we're, I don't believe that any of us are content being here because there are more to reach. That's there right. are more people to build for. And listen, in my heart, and I believe in the hearts of all of you that are here today that we all know that God has opened up this opportunity and it's time for us to go because we can't be satisfied for now because we know the best is yet to come. That's we right. always know that, Good. right? Our growing matters, it's actually one of our four core values, yes, serving, sharing, giving, and growing. We're all about growth. We're all about growth. And we're always going to be about finding a space and providing a place for more people to come and meet Jesus and to grow. Because here's what we know. Found people find people. Come Found on. people it's find good. people. It's good. And we can find the people because we are the ones who do the finding, but God is the one who does the fixing. So we need to bring them Come to on, place. somebody. Say that again. We are the ones that do the finding, but God is the one who does the fixing. God is the one that does the fixing. Drop the mic. So it's our job to provide a space for them to come so they can meet God, so God can fix the things that are broken in their lives. Okay. Amen? Anybody? Somebody should yes. tweet that. So our doors are always open for just so one more. Jesus said it this way. I have a heart for the one who is lost. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the 99 that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. Do numbers matter? They matter to us because they matter to Jesus. They matter to Jesus, and they should matter to us also. I'm a number. You're a number. The person next to you is a number. And, he, you know, here's the thing about it. God, even though you're a number, he knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows your every thought. In fact, every number that we talk about has a name, and every name has a story. And here's what we got to know, that every story matters to God. Come on. Every story matters to That's God. Right. And I, I really want you to hear this because you guys are already in this house today. While all of us matter in this place, in the same way, all of the people who aren't here matter to this place. So it, it is brilliant. about us, but it's also not about us. It's about them who aren't here yet, the people who have not met Jesus. Again, providing that space. You see, God includes us, but it's not limited to us. And at some point... As we're growing in this place, if you've been here any amount of time, as the Karns said, they've grown. I've grown. And I'm hoping that you have grown as well. In this walk with Jesus, our hearts should be for the ones who aren't here. Our hearts should be for the ones who need to come and know Jesus because God works in us so that he can work through us. So good. God works in you so and good. me so that he can work through you and me. You see, at one point, you were out there. But somebody invited you in this place, and now you're in here, and it's our job to go back out there and invite more in. It's good. All right. It's good. Let me put it this way. You've got to go so we can grow. So good. You've got to go so we can grow. It's always about going and growing. Go into the world. Jesus always calls us, puts us in on a mission, sends us to a place. We've got to go so that you can grow. And how many of us know that growing sometimes will cause some tension in your life? That, that if you're going to grow, there's going to be some things in your life that are going to get stretched. And, and that's okay. And, and really what I want to focus on in, in the, just, the next couple of minutes that we have is some people that have grown in our church. Because what my hope is, it's so easy in a church like this that you start to come and, and you're here week one and you go, wow, man, God's doing something there. I, I'm not even sure what it is. I'm not really sure who Jesus is yet, and all, but man, something's happening there. And then you're here for a while and, and you start to become familiar. You start to go, well, the music's great every week. It's just great music. And you go, wow, the people are nice every week, and, and the place looks great, and, and there's great creativity in the church, and the message is always good. And you just act like that's like normal. People, yeah, people got saved. People got rescued by Jesus. That's, that's normal. Let me tell you something. That's not normal. That's not happening everywhere. 
as your pastor, let me be the first to say that Linda and I are championing every church in America if they're preaching Jesus. I want to see every church full in America that's preaching Jesus. However, not every church in America is full. In fact, 95% of churches are in decline. And we're talking about hope grows here and building a church so that we can reach thousands of people. What God is doing here, come on, it's not normal. It's not happening everywhere. So we should never take for granted this is normal. I want to talk to you just briefly about how hope has grown in one person's life that I'm just kind of getting to know. There's a guy by the name of Justin that's in the front row today. And Justin, and here's the thing I love about our church. We just, we're, we allow ourselves to be authentic. We, we are the perfect place for imperfect people. And that's Justin and his girlfriend, Mariah. And I don't know what that dog's name, Spot. That's Spot the dog. I don't know. Anyhow, listen, I want to tell you, four weeks ago, Justin didn't know Jesus. In fact, Justin didn't really even believe there was a God. He was angry at the world and really wanted nothing to do with church. But watch how this works. Our daughter, Betsy, who I believe is just like the evangelist of all time. I mean, Betsy invites everybody, everyone she meets. Started to pray for a friend of hers, a girl named Mariah that's in the front, front row, and started to pray for Mariah. Mariah had no idea, but Betsy was praying for her. And uh, Mariah came to our church. And Mariah said, there's hope in this place. And she went back and she told her boyfriend, Justin, you got to come with me. And I want to tell you, sometimes it just doesn't take God long. And now they're both part of the family of God. Come on, they've been saved. They've been rescued. They're right here in the front row. Would you guys just stand up for me? Just for a minute and just look back and just tell your family, your church family, hey, they love you. Come on, God's doing something in this place. And if he did it for them, how many more can he do it for? Come on, hope grows here. God is doing something in this place. Listen, why we're passionate about it. At some point, we have to go all in because the valley's at stake. Because our families are at stake. Because your friends are at stake. Our schools are at stake. There is a incredible, I believe we're at a tipping point. And, and our valley is going to go one way or the other. And here's what I think. Because God has hand-selected you. Not the person beside you. God has hand-selected you. For a time such as this, and we're about to take our valley back. We're about, we're about to take the valley back. And you know what? And I know 10 o'clock, we, we're on a time constraint, but let me just say this. <laughs> I'm tired of living in a place that people can't wait to get out of. What if, just what if, there was a movement, not just a church, there was a movement of hand-selected people that God started to do something through them, and guess what happened? The valley would be a place that people couldn't wait to get to because God was doing something here. They might be not know exactly what it is, but they say, we're not leaving, we're coming, we're staying. Young people were moving back to the valley. Now, you might think that's crazy that a church can do that. Let me tell you, the God I'm talking about, it's the same God that parted the Red Sea. It's the same God that can change our valley. It's the same God that can slay a giant. It's the same God that can take down the walls of Jericho. Come on. It's the same God that can raise the dead. We're talking about a God that can do anything at any time. Come on. For anyone. Come on. Let's just start believing the calling that God, Linda, has put on man. Yes, I'm passionate about it. I want a better life for you, for your family, for generations, Linda, because of Jesus. In fact, 2 Samuel says this in, in uh, chapter 22, you give me a better way to live, God. 
so I live as you want me to. Mm -hmm. See, what we're saying in this verse is this. I want to live like you want me to live, God, because you do give me a better way to live. For anybody who's accepted Christ yes. and is walking this walk, there is a better way to live. I want to be more compassionate. I want to be more forgiving. Yes. I want to be more loving. I want to be more um, embracing of people. I want to be more successful. You see, I want to live the best life that I can possibly live, but I have to live it with you, God. Listen, we don't want to wake up one day and just exist. And what I want you to know is this, that this does not fall in our laps, that this, there's something that we have to do. Right. And here's what we know. What we sow will grow. What so we good. plant... What we're doing today is planting seeds for tomorrow. See, mm -hmm. we can think about the vision, but we have to live in the now. So we can be all starry-eyed thinking about the building that's coming and thinking about the things that are coming, but we've got to remember we've got work to do right this Good. very minute. So the seeds that we plant right now, I'm going to ask you this. What seeds are you planting? Are you planting seeds of negativity? Are you planting seeds of guilt? Are you planting seeds of bitterness and anger? Or really, in essence, are you planting weeds? Because whatever you continue to feed will continue to grow. So we have to have a shift. A shift has to happen in our thinking and in our minds. Some of y'all need a holy shift. You need a holy shift. We need t-shirts. Oh, you'll tweet that. that. Oh, Pastor said holy shift. You won't tweet how good God is. You'll tweet, Pastor said holy shift. Got to take a holy shift. I think we need a t-shirt that says that. I don't know. I do too, actually. Let me ask you this. Has there been a shift in your life today? Are you at that place where there's been a shift? Are you starting to plant seeds of success? Are you standing, starting to plant seeds of love and of generosity and of forgiveness? Because what you plant, you'll get. Mm -hmm. Remember this, the scripture says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but whoever sows generously of those things of God will also reap generously. You know, we all want a better tomorrow. That's why today matters. What we're doing today matters for those things that are in our future. Anybody with us today That's on good, that? Linda. Amen. What are we planning? So what we're going to do planning. in the time that we have left, we always like to give you handles. We want to help your today. And what we're going to do in the time we have left, we want to give you three things, decisions that you can make today. If you plant these decisions today, it's going to provide a better tomorrow for you. Are you ready? Three of you are ready. Okay, I'll wait. It's all right. I'll wait. Y'all want to be late for sunny boys. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Here's the first thing. <laughs> Three things that you can do today that will positively impact your tomorrow. Number one is decide to expect more from God. Decide today to expect more from God. Because let me ask you a question. What do you think God can do? What, how, how capable do you think God is? And I'll tell you how you can find out. The size of your prayers determines the size of your God. If you're praying, oh God, just kind of help me today. I just don't want to have a bad day. Just help me with that. That's fine. God, help me. Oh, I sprained my, my pinky, my toe. God, can you help me with my toe? Yeah, God can do that. But what if you start saying, God, I want you to do so, so, something so great through me that nobody even recognizes that it's me, that they look to you. What if you started to pray that? What if you started to pray, God, change my city through my church? What if you started to pray, God, give me influence around the people that you've placed me near so that I can draw them to you because it says that all men will be drawn to Jesus. God, what if you start using me in a way that I've never dreamt? God, what if we start praying that we could build a church that could change a valley? You want to start talking about some prayers? What I'm telling you is the way that you pray determines how big God is. And I'm encouraging you, if you want to see a difference in your tomorrow, start praying bold, audacious prayers today. Don't be afraid to ask, oh, I'm not sure if God's going to do it. Here's what I want to tell you. This is a good word. Don't miss this. Listen. Intimacy leads to audacity. You didn't get it, but I'm about to show you. Watch. Linda and I, and I was away for three days at the Men's Warrior Conference, so I'm sitting a little, a little closer today. <laughs> Y'all wish you were me. 
Sorry. I don't mean that like with my wife. That's weird. Forget it. All right, we rewind. I did well. Let me just say that. So, intimacy leads to audacity. Linda and I are intimate. She knows me. I know her. I can ask anything of her. I'm intimate. I know what she's capable of. I'm not afraid to ask her. Is the answer always yes? No. (laughs) But you know that because we're intimate. We're working on it. (laughs) So, back to, back to, this was a spiritual moment for man that's just lost it, but Tom, I don't, so here's the point. We're intimate. We're close. I can ask her anything. Intimacy with God, the closer that you get to God, the more that you get to know God, you will begin to pray audacious prayers because you know what he's capable of. It's not going to limit you. Why? You know him. You know what he can do. You know what he wants to do. And you have a relationship. And you will begin to pray bold prayers. If you start praying bold prayers today, I promise you, it will positively impact your tomorrow. That's really good. You can, st- you can stay over here. I'll stay over there. <laughs> the second thing is this. Yeah. Decide... <laughs> Decide to expect more from yourself. You know, let's just decide to stop making excuses and decide to make a difference. Oh, that's so good. Let's just decide to do that. That's let's so decide, good. Let's not make excuses. Let's just make a difference. If I were to ask you right now, what are you capable of? I'm not sure if every one of you would really know what you're capable, capable of. What? I don't think you know how far you can go. I don't think you realize the talents and the giftings and the things that you have to offer. And ex- instead of expecting more from others around you, I really believe we have to start expecting more of ourselves, to start pushing ourselves a little bit, challenging ourselves a little bit. Listen, everything, every time you're stretched a little bit, it's a challenge, but it takes you to the next place you need to be. What are you doing right now that you shouldn't be doing? And what are you not doing that you should be doing? Ask yourself that question. Let's be real about it. He's called us to take steps to change the world and to be doing what he's called us to do. In fact, the scripture says this in 2 Timothy, it is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work. Not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan long before the world began to show his love and kindness to us through Christ. That was his plan to save us for his holy work. Why? We are saved to serve. We're saved to serve. Why did God save us? To serve him. So we got to start pushing ourselves a little bit to start serving, taking that step that will bring a greater purpose into our tomorrow. You might be thinking this right now. Maybe this is you. How do I know what my ministry is? How do I know what it is that I do? Let me ask you this. What do you love to do? What talents do you have? What giftings do you have? What drives you? What are those things that wouldn't stop you in a morning to get up that you could do all day? That's what God's positioned you to do and what he's purposed you to do. That's why some of y'all have a coffee ministry. (laughs) That's what drives you to get up in the morning. It's coffee. It's okay. All real Christians, by the way, decaps from the devil. Just throw it out. You don't need it. It's waste. Just drink water. Just drink water. Listen, let me give you this real quick. That, that word ministry always sounds a little bit scary. Ministry, also known as serving. Yes. It's not yeah. anything super fancy, super spiritual. It is really about ser- serving others like Christ has served us. So good, Linda. Good. Serve it up. Serve it up. Last thing, real quick. You have to decide today for a better tomorrow if you're willing to pay the price. When you purchase something, generally there's three options in your purchase. Good, better, and best. Most of us would love to have the best. However, we're not always willing to pay the price. So we settle for good or better. What I'm about to tell you, watch, don't miss this. Jesus undoubtedly is the best. But when you decide to follow Jesus, it's going to cost you. Oh, there's nobody clapping now. Oh, you were all clapping just a minute ago. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you some friendships. People say, oh, following Jesus is great. You, you sign up. Where do I sign? My life is great. No, 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 no. 
It says that you've got to bear a cross. It says that you're going to have to do some things that not everyone can do because the road is narrow. It's one thing to just say it. It's another thing to be it. It's another thing to live it. And we're talking about living it here in this house. But it will cost you. Doing, having a better tomorrow will cost you today. Listen, do you want to get in shape? It's going to cost you. You're going to have to spend some time in the gym. Right? Do you want a great retirement plan for later? It's going to cost you today. We've got to start preparing, Linda, for a greater tomorrow. Ask yourself, where do, where do you see yourself in five years? Because if you're not taking steps now to get there, you're never going to make it. You've got to start doing things today for a better tomorrow. But it will cost you. Jesus is saying the kingdom business, Linda, is not for the faint of heart. It's not for everyone. What are you willing to pay? Let me, let me ask you this. As a church, what are we willing to pay? What are we willing to sacrifice so that others will know him? Got a great question. What are you and your family willing to give up? I always say this. What are you willing to give up for what you love, for what you love more? Because for me and my house, we love Jesus more than anything. I love it more than a car that I wish that, that I had. I would love it more than a vacation that I would love to go on. I would love, Hawaii sounds great. But we love Jesus more. And there are some things that we're willing to give up so that others can come to know him. Yeah. And I just want to just, just tell you today, that listen close. As your pastor, I want to encourage you every week. I want to build you up every week. I want to inspire you every week. I want to motivate you every week. But it's my job to challenge you every week. Because God has put something in you, and it's my job to get it out of you. He's made a deposit in you that we want to come out of you. Here's where we are, every one of us right now. Watch. You're at a crossroad in your life. A crossroad. Are you going to stay at the intersection? Or are you going today to take the next step to where God wants you to go. Let's pray together. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you today just for an opportunity to be in your house around your people, God. Dreaming big, praying bigger, believing for the impossible because your word tells us with you all things are possible for those that believe. I'd ask that you keep your heads bowed. bowed. I just want to talk to you for one moment. Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do today. Everyone in this room, you've got a next step. For some of you, it's your first time, or maybe you've been coming to our church for a while, and you've never fully surrendered to Jesus, but something is moving in your spirit right now. Some, you can't even put your finger on it, but God is speaking to you in a way that you've never felt before. Your next step is surrendering fully to Jesus being Lord of your life. For others, maybe you've been following a while, but you're not serving yet. You've just been attending. You've been a participator in our church. But Jesus is telling you that your next step is moving from spectator to participator. For others here today, maybe it's a giving challenge that you've been living in fear and fear will paralyze you. But now you're stepping out in faith and saying, God, I'm going to trust you not only with my life, but my finances so that we can further the vision that you put on our hearts that hope may grow here for generations. I don't know what your next step is, but you have one. And we're going to do something just a little different today. And I don't know why we're going to do this, but I just feel like this is what God wants us to do. We're not going to raise a hand right now for every person in this room. And if this is not you, please do not feel obligated to do this. But right now, for everyone in here, 
that you know your next step and you're ready to take it, I want you without question, just stand up right now. You know that you've got a next step and you're going to take a step today. Yes. People standing all over the room. I'm going to take a step. I'm not going to stay where I am. I refuse to just stay where I am. God, I want to be a difference maker. I want to do something with the life that you've given me. And I'm going to take a bold step. People still standing all over the room. Don't let the devil talk you out of what God wants to talk you into right now. There's people right now, you want to stand and you're just afraid. Just if God's speaking to your heart right now, stand up. Listen, if he'll die for you, will you stand for him? There's a step. People still standing. Praise God. People still, Spirit of God moving. Still standing. People still standing. Still standing. Still standing. What's your next step? Still standing up. Come on, people moving right now. I believe by faith that there are people coming into the kingdom of God right now. That you're taking a step of faith. There's people that God's speaking to your heart and you're saying, I'm in. Father, I pray for each person in this room, whether they're sitting or standing, God, you've got a purpose and a place for them in your kingdom. Father, I pray with all of my heart and I'm believing so big, God, that you're speaking to them and they're not hearing my voice, that you're, they're hearing your voice and it's the voice that's saying, I know you, I've created you, I put a deposit in your life that's unlimited and I want you to start living out the potential that I've placed in you. That you can do more than you've ever expected or imagined. You just have to take a step. Father, we believe that for our, for our church, that the best really is yet to come. God, that you're doing something, that you're stirring the hearts of a valley here, that, that you're moving in a way that is tangible, that we can see you, we can hear you, we can feel your presence in this place, God. And we're not just going to stand by and watch idly, but rather we're going to step into what you're doing. We're going to be part of it. Come on. We believe that hope grows here. Come on. Everybody in the house, let's give Jesus a shout today and thank him for who he is. say hope grows here Woo. come on somebody give it up for our pastors one more time my goodness gracious